July 16th, 2020. From El Cajon in San Diego, California, this is episode 213 of You Can Bet On That. Hi everybody, welcome to You Can Bet On That, a podcast for the recreational gambler. My name is Mark Duvall and sitting at his house is Dr. Mike. Hello. Mike, how are you feeling? You had a, a little bit of a COVID scare, didn't you? Yeah, yeah. I <laughs> Two Fridays ago, I worked on a patient. Fortunately, she was the last person of the night. And then on Monday, I did not feel good and I didn't go to work. Well, she called that day and told the girls that she tested positive for mm. COVID-19 <sighs> and she got it from her children. She's an older lady. They were all sick. She was sick. So... Unfortunately, I had to stay home, which was fine because I was not feeling good myself. Yeah. And by the time I got a test and everything, they didn't have the results. It was supposed to be over the weekend, but I didn't actually find out until Monday, two days ago. Fortunately, that was negative, so that negative. was a good thing. Yeah. But I had taken the antibody test before, and it said that I was had a low level of antibodies in me. For COVID-19. For COVID nineteen, yeah. yeah, they said it says COVID nineteen slash SARS. Okay, so they determined that you know I probably had an infection previously, but I had a pretty low level of antibodies. Mm -hmm. And the doctor said, "Well, I think you're okay to go to work," but he wanted to do some more tests. So on Monday, I took some more tests, and I have just not felt good the last couple of days. So I've been staying home from work just to be safe, so that I don't you know pass it on to anybody if yeah. I do have anything going on. So. I'm hoping to go back tomorrow if I can muster up the energy. Wow, gosh. Yeah, and that's why we didn't go to the casino this last week, too. You just were not up to it. No, I could not go. I was I was exhausted. Yeah. All right, and and the, your yeah. family's okay? Yeah, they're fine. Actually, that's good. they're all fine. Of course, I'm the weekly <laughs> one in the family. Yeah, well, yeah. <laughs> they're, I, they're all real healthy. Yeah, I, I wasn't sure if we needed to tell listeners that. I think they already knew, but... Actually, it's probably they've good you seen, said something. They've yeah. seen me. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, I hope you feel better, not just for your family, but yeah, you need to get back to work. You need to get back to the dice table too. So Yes. I, two things I have missed. I Believe it or not, I've been missing work the last couple of days. I was wow. telling my wife, I, I got to get back to work. <laughs> yeah. Wow. <laughs> <'Cause> it, yeah. <laughs> All right, well, let's move on to the gambling then. We got an email from listener Walter. He had a couple of questions that I thought would be good for the show. So let's talk about those. His first question was, have you ever picked up a tip due to dealer rudeness? Have you ever done this, Mike? No, I don't think I've ever picked up a tip. Now, yeah. I've made tips and then the dealers were not appreciative or kind of rude, and then I just didn't make any more for You them. stopped tipping them, right. Yeah, but I don't think I've ever actually picked one off the table and said, oh, I'm taking this back. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I've joked about that a few times. <laughs> I think it's the same way with me. I try to tip as soon as I get to the table, especially if it's a crew that is not familiar with me and I'm not familiar with them. I'll start tipping right away so they know, hey, I'm somebody who tips. But yeah, if I don't get some kind of acknowledgement or good service, then yeah, I'll stop. Yeah, you know, it's not so much rudeness that bothers me. It's more just appreciativeness. If if you tip and the dealers pick it up and say, hey, thanks for the tip, or make some mention of it to their buddy, like the, you'll hear them say sometimes, like, this is our sponsor, then I have no problem tipping. I actually enjoy it. But when they don't say anything, it's like they just pick it up like, yeah, or whatever. Yeah. Then, you know, that kind of rubs me the wrong way. I think Walter actually had a situation. He was asking because he was kind of in that situation where, you know, he thought, oh, I just picked this tip up, right? Why, why should I tip these guys when they're acting this way? Right. Yeah. All right. And then the second question from Walter, he said, knowing you are not lawyers, as you so often state, is it possible to avoid taxation on a $1,200 plus jackpot if you take the win in free play and hope that you get your money back as you play through it? So I know he worded it a certain way. He talked about avoid taxation, 
but we want to make it really clear here, you cannot avoid taxation on your gambling winnings. In fact, you and I, Mike, we paid our taxes today, the final yes. due date this Wednesday, because we both had to pay. We didn't get refunds. <laughs> nope. <laughs> so we waited to the last possible minute. But you do have to pay taxes on your winnings. Now, I think what Walter is really getting at is, let's say you've got a jackpot on a slot that's more than $1,200, and you want to avoid the filing of a W-2G. If the casino will give you free play instead of cash, yes, they won't give you a W-2G. But keep in mind, if you go and play that off, you know, say $1,200, $2,000, whatever it is, you play it off and you get real money for that, that's something that you need to pay taxes on or at least declare when it's time to fill out your tax form because maybe you've got gambling losses that will offset that. But the point is, okay, yes, in this case, they won't give you W-2G. Now, that's a big if. The casino may not give you free play. You know, they may yes. say, hey, look, no, we're not going to give you free play. We've got to fill out this tax form. Here's your, you know, $2,000 and here's your W-2G. Yeah. Have you ever heard of a casino offering you that option? Well, I've never heard of them offering that option. But at the same time, I've never heard of a player asking for that in lieu of cash. And that would be kind of an interesting question if anybody has done that and said, hey, can I get this in free play instead of cash? I'm guessing the slot attendant probably won't have any jurisdiction over that, and they'll just say, oh, I don't know, you know, here's your cash. But that is a good question. Yeah, I'd like to know if anyone's ever been presented with that, because Mm -hmm. think about this. What if you won a big jackpot, not like a Mm $1,200, but a big jackpot, let's say, well, for instance, when I I won $15,000 in Vegas at one time. Right, on on a Bellagio slot, yeah. What if they said to me, oh, we'll give you $15,000 free play and, you know, you don't have to fill out this W-2G? Yeah. I don't know. That'd be kind of hard. I mean, at the time, I would have taken the cash and said, give me the receipt because I can write that off with losses. Right. But for somebody else, maybe who doesn't gamble a lot, they might say, hey, I'll take the free play and then I'll hope to win. Yeah, this is going to be a, I'm going to have gambling winnings that I'm going to need to declare I don't want the paperwork. But again, this is not a way to get around the taxes. It's just a way to maybe get (laughs) around the W2G. Do you remember a few years back, Mike, there was a host that we had at Harris Southern California back when it was called Rincon, really good host. And he was talking about the big giveaways that they have every six months. And he said, hey, what do you guys think? We're actually toying with the idea of giving away free play, you know, like with the $50,000 win or the $100,000 win, even the million They were talking about, what do you think about free play? So they were toying with that idea. It never came to anything, and and who knows if it would even have been feasible for them. But do you remember that? Yeah, I do remember him saying that. I think the casino would love that. I think so too, right? Because then they're not filling out as much paperwork, and there's a better chance that they're going to get a lot of that money back. A lot better chance, right? Yeah, I, it's it's interesting, and I certainly know that there are a few times in Vegas where you've been part of some kind of drawing or something, and you have gotten the money in free play. Wasn't it like $5,000 one time? Yes, uh-huh, yeah. Yeah, so... Yeah, and I think casinos would love that because, like you said, number one, way less paperwork. Mm-hmm. And number two, they don't have to track anything or, you know, make sure stuff was reported to the government. They just give them the free play, and then it's up to the person to play that and declare what they win, you know? Yeah, and that 5000 that you got, they didn't give you any other... IRS paperwork or anything, did they? No, no, yeah, I no, think no, so. no. Yeah. just 5000 in free play. Yeah. yeah, so yeah, it is an interesting question. If anybody has ever been offered free play in lieu of big jackpot money or have requested it, that would really be the thing is, have you ever requested free play and what happened? <laughs> well, if we go to Vegas and you somehow play some progressive slot machine and win a million dollars, Mark, you should ask for free play. Then when you go home... You'll say to your wife, hey, look, this is just gambling money. I got free play. (laughs) That's right. Yeah. (laughs) Meanwhile, it's all a bunch of slips from the Cal downtown that I just didn't have enough time to go all the way through. I've got like $750,000 I've got to run through next time I go to the Cal. (laughs) Right. And they're all in $5 bags. (laughs) That's right. (laughs) Just big suitcase full. (laughs) 
<laughs> well, you can give them out as gifts. <laughs> yeah, oh, right. it's your birthday? Oh, here's ten dollars for the cow. Free play. Right. You know what? Here's twenty. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you're good for the rest of your life on family presents. It's, yes. right. it's good. <laughs> now, don't forget to declare that on your taxes. <laughs> right. <laughs> Hey, thanks to everyone who's been clicking through our Amazon link. Remember, whenever you're going to buy something through Amazon, please go to our page first, youcanbetonthat.com, and click through our Amazon link towards the top of the page. All right, let's get to some voicemails. First up is Cody. Hey, guys. It's Cody from Alabama, and I'm calling with a trip report. My wife and I went on our 10-year anniversary trip this past week. We flew from Atlanta to Spokane, Washington, and then drove over to Montana to stay near Glacier National Park. Uh, so we were there for five days, and on the way back, we spent a couple of days in the state of Washington and visited Northwest Casino just outside of Spokane or just beside the airport. And, uh, you know, I couldn't say enough good things about Northwest. Everyone we came in contact to as far as workers and dealers and crew were great, had great experience there. But I wanted to talk about some interesting things that they allowed at the crap stable and just wanted to see if this was common in other places because I'd really never seen it before. So it was a $5 crap stable with two times odds or double odds. Most of the casinos that I was familiar with in Mississippi or some of the ones that I played in Las Vegas offered 10 to 20 times odds. So when a number like an 8 or a 6 was the point, say you had a 5 or $10 pass line bet, if you wanted to place more money on the eight or the six, they would go ahead and allow you to double dip on the number on the place bet at the top of the board. And then the dealer also said that he would allow me to increase my pass line bet. And I'd really never seen that before and just want to know if that was common. I was always under the assumption in other casinos that I'd played in to say if you had a $10 pass line bet, then you could not add or take away from that. But there they would allow you to increase your pass line bet after the point had been established. And then, therefore, you could also increase your odds bet. So you had $10 out there and it was a 6 or an 8. You could increase the pass line bet to 20 and then you could place 40 behind your pass line bet. Just want to know what you guys thought about that. And then also, if you could comment on casino laws in Montana. I didn't visit any, but it seemed like in every gas station, grocery store, restaurant, bar, wherever that you go to in Montana, they advertise being a casino. And I realize it's kind of slot machine gaming and keno and maybe video poker or something only. But if you guys, I'm not, I'm just not familiar with that. If you could talk about it a little bit, uh, enjoy the show and have a happy fourth. Uh, yeah. Uh, Montana casinos. So there are some tribal casinos in Montana that have full-blown class three slot machines, that kind of thing. But there are also over a thousand just bars and taverns that are allowed to have up to 20 video machines. And they, they have to be video poker or video bingo or video kino. And I believe that it's like class two. So it's not even true video poker. And Mike, you were in Montana, right? You saw some of these. They're just yeah. these, they're oh, all they, over the place, right? They were all over the place. It seemed like every block had one. Yeah. My kids were like, oh, there's another casino, you know, cause they, it'll be a bar and then it'll say underneath casino. Right. <laughs> yeah. And I, didn't you go to like an IHOP and there was like a, it yeah. said IHOP casino. They weren't really yep. connected, but it kind of looked like they were. It kind of looked like they were connected. They were in the same little plaza back to back. <laughs> But yeah, the IHOP, and you could just go right next door into the casino. Yeah, so that's what it is. They're not really full-blown casinos. Only 20 maximum. We talk about these back on episodes 157 and 158, and I think Professor Slots even called in to give a little information about you know what they're allowed to do in Montana. So getting back to what you were talking about on the craps table, Cody, yes, if you want to add to your pass line bet... After a point has been established, the casino will let you do that. They won't let you take the bet away, and they won't let you lower the bet, but they will let you add to the bet. You it's to their take, advantage. It's to their advantage, because if you're just talking about the flat bet, you're making an even money bet that a point is going to come up before a seven. And of course, that isn't an even wager, right? The chances are a seven is going to come up before the point. So of course, they're going to let you make that bet for even money. Now, you can always place the point, even if you've got a pass line bet and, say, max odds, 
they'll let you place the point as well. You can always do that. So it sounds like at this casino, they were maybe encouraging you to, oh, you can add to the pass line, and that way you can increase your odds. But be careful, because if it's only double odds, like it was here at this casino, you're actually better off making a place bet instead of adding to your pass line bet. And here's a real simple example. Let's say you had $5 on the pass line and five was rolled, and you back it up with $10 odds. And let's say you're thinking, oh, you know, I want to bet another $15 on the five. So I'll just put five more on my pass line and 10 more on odds. Well, if a five is rolled for that additional wager that you've put on the pass line, you're going to win $5 for the additional $5 on the pass line, and you're going to win $15 for the additional 10 that you put in the back. So five and 15, that's $20. Whereas if you had placed the five for $15, you would have gotten $21. So when the odds are that low, it might actually be better to make a place bet than to add to your pass line bet. When you add to your pass line bet, that is technically called a put bet. And casinos will let you do that with the exception of Atlantic City casinos. Apparently that is the law there that you are not allowed to add to your pass line bet. And it was probably made into a law to protect the player because it is a bad move to add to your pass line bet when it only pays even money. It's a bad move for two reasons. Number one, you get less money. And number two, you're adding money to a bet that's probably going to lose. Right. Now, if you go back and listen to some of our earlier episodes, we do talk about times where making a put bet actually is better than making a place bet. But certainly in this situation, it would not be because it's only double odds. So Cody, yeah, there wasn't anything special about the Northern Quest Casino that, you know, you can pretty much do that anywhere. And thanks for calling in too. I don't think we've actually heard any kind of report from the Northern Quest Casino in Washington. So that's great. Yeah, when Cody started off his call and said that it was their 10th wedding anniversary and knowing that he was going to talk about gambling, I was ready to announce his wife as wife of the century Oh yeah, for, <laughs> for taking a casino trip for their 10th wedding anniversary. But then, you know, it made more sense when he said, you know, that was just somewhere they passed. Yeah. Through. That was like a sidetrack. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and I was actually relieved. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Next call. Hey gentlemen, Jason from Michigan, just checking in to see what you guys know, or could talk a little bit about what is happening in Vegas. Uh, it's July 3rd currently right now, and I know here in Michigan we've shut down our bars across the country. A lot of states are shutting down their restaurants and bars as well. And wondering, we don't hear a word about Vegas having issues. Could you kind of just fill me in on are you required to wear a mask in all the casinos? What's going on out there? And is it worth taking a trip? Uh, other than that, I hope you guys had a great 4th of July and look forward to hearing uh, what's going on in Vegas. Thanks. Yeah, so in Las Vegas, the number of COVID cases is definitely going up, but they're not seeing a lot of additional hospitalizations or deaths. But there have been some. And in fact, just recently, a couple weeks ago, we talked about it, they are now making masks mandatory when you're in the casinos. However, just this last week, they closed all bars. So... Whether it's good to go or not, oh my gosh, that's your call, right? Just keep in mind that if you go, you're going to have to wear a mask in the casino. Restaurants might be closed or it might be harder to get into restaurants because of the social distancing. And if you like seeing shows, I mean, forget it. You know, there are really virtually no shows going on right now. So it's going to be a different Vegas experience than you're used to. So, you know, what's your comfort level, right? Even here in California, right? Our cases are spiking. So this thing is not over. Keep in mind, if you go to Vegas, you're going to be wearing a mask. I agree 100% with you, Mark. Mm. And my advice to people would be, it kind of depends on what you're going to Vegas for. Yeah. So if you and I were going, we would go with the intent knowing that we're going to gamble about 90% of the time. <laughs> yeah. As usual. Our other, yeah, that's our usual <laughs> routine. We're going to spend our other 10% eating and sleeping. Right. <laughs> so for us, if we're willing to take the risk and you know we don't mind wearing the mask, it'd be fine. But if you're a Vegas person who goes and you're going to spend time at a show or do some activities or hang out by the pool or do whatever, then you know you might want to just wait a few weeks or months and see what happens. Yeah, definitely. And certainly the 
majority of people who are going to Vegas, or certainly who went to Vegas when it first opened, were gamblers because there wasn't right. a lot more to do, right? They just wanted to go and gamble. And again, we've talked about this. You know, a lot of people live close to places where they can gamble now. So yeah, we're looking forward to going back to Las Vegas. But you know, maybe we'll go for circa opening. We certainly aren't thinking, oh, we need to get back there right now because we have other outlets for gambling close to us. All right, next up is Bert. Hey, Mark and Dr. Mike. It's Bert from Virginia again. Just giving you a quick trip report from a weekend getaway to live casino in Maryland. Came up with the wife to just get away for a little bit. Hoped to play some crap, got here. They got four tables running, three at 25 one at $50. Six or seven players at each table, plexiglass like dividers. Masks are required. Uh, they've been taking reservations for most of the busy times of the day. You have to reserve a three-hour block to get into the casino. They aren't enforcing it too much on off days, but I would imagine when it's busy, they're probably going to enforce that. Otherwise, I uh, came up with a few hundred bucks, hoping to find a $15 table. Didn't find one. Played a little video poker. Won a little bit, but not a lot. But I still need to feed that crap to Jones. I guess I'll have to save up a bankroll to get to Vegas a couple of times this year to play some craps. Everything on the East Coast is $25, 50 $100 minimum, so not really working for me. Hope you guys are doing well. Glad you guys have survived the pandemic. Look forward to more shows. Talk to you later. Yeah, thanks. It's definitely a lot harder right now for low rollers to find table games that they're comfortable playing at. And Mike, we were talking about it. In Harris, Southern California, if you're a low roller, you can't play regular craps. And I, I know it's card craps, but I mean at a regular craps table where you're throwing the dice and they have dealers and everything because there are only two tables. And on a weekend, they're both $25. Weren't we there on that one weekend and they were both $50? They were both fifty that one weekend, yeah. and the last time I think there was one twenty-five and one fifty. Yeah. So you're not going to find the fifteen-dollar, ten-dollar tables anymore. No, and the two roll to win tables were ten dollars that night. Now you can get on the shoot to win machine if you can find a seat. <laughs> you probably right. have to wait for it, right? That's five dollar minimum, or you can go over to the stadium gaming, which is not nearly as popular. But they do have $3 minimums. I don't see a lot of people playing there. So, And this is true, I think, for casinos throughout the country. If you do go to a place like Vegas, well, there are enough casinos that you might find some lower minimums. But yeah, it's tough right now for low rollers and table games. Yeah, and I think it's going to be this way for a while, Mm -hmm. unfortunately, just because of the limits on people who they can let play. So on a busy night, when they've got plenty of people there who don't mind playing $25, it's just going to be $25. Mm-hmm. That's just all there is to it. Yep. And three players to a side on the tables. And we were thinking, oh, they might bump it up to four. But no, with the recent spike in COVID cases, I think it's going to stay three on each side for a while. I'm just hoping that uh, we're not forced to close down in California. Because I think, again, today, the county of San Diego set another record for number of new cases. Yeah. And had quite a few deaths. And I, you know, it's hard to know how this is all calculated and everything, but there's definitely something going around. (laughs) Yeah, there is. Well said, (laughs) Dr. Mike. (laughs) I mean, there are people who will say, oh, you know, they're counting every death as COVID. And I hear all kinds of conspiracy issues and stuff, but there's no denying that there's definitely something going on. <laughs> so take that for what it is, I yeah, guess. I hope not, too. Yeah, they closed the bars down here, and the casinos are staying open basically because they're tribal casinos, right? Sovereign land. And you know they haven't made the determination that they're going to close again. They certainly don't want to. Yeah, we should note that they closed the card rooms here in San Diego County. Yes, uh huh. And those, again, those are not tribal casinos. They're just local card rooms that virtually only deal poker. And, you know, those have been closed. Yep. All right. Uh, let's hear from Doug. He came across some interesting situation at some carnival games. Hello, Mark and Dr. Mike. This is Doug from the DFW area. I'm here to tell you about a very unique setup for table games at two casinos I found in Arkansas. These were at the Southland Casino in West Memphis, Arkansas, which is aptly named for being west of the city of Memphis, Tennessee. 
I also found it at the Oaklawn Casino in the very popular resort city of Hot Springs, uh, Arkansas. So as far as I know, these unique tables are only for carnival games, uh, such as uh, Ultimate Texas Hold'em, Three Card Poker, and Mississippi Stud. The table games are almost like normal, uh, using cards coming out of a shuffler. Uh, you take a seat, you give the dealer your cash and chip. Now, the biggest difference is the money is handled electronically. There's a small flat screen on the surface for each player, so the money will appear on the screen as the dealer puts it in. All the betting is done through the touch screen. Uh, you can imagine it's like the shoot twin crafts, except the screen is much smaller, so almost like the size of an iPad mini. Once all the players place a bet, the dealer press a button on the shuffler and all the hands are dealt normally. The players make subsequent bets on the screen. Now, the, the most important aspect is that the resolution of the hand is done automatically. Each device knows the dealt cards for both the player and the dealer's hand. So the dealer doesn't really have to do anything like reading the hands, figuring out the payout, paying the chips or taking away the, any kind of money. All the dealer has to do is press each player's screen to acknowledge that the hand has been processed. So you can tell this is, makes a very quick game. UTH is my favorite game. And if you ever played it, you will realize it's a very, very slow game. With this method, this goes by at least three times faster than normal. Now here's the funny thing. The tables still have chips. If you want to cash out, it's not like a slot ticket for like the shoot to win crafts. The dealer still pays you out in chip. You can also cash out any amount you like. For example, a couple bucks to uh, tip the server. You can add more money to your account at any time if you want to make a big bet. You can even transfer some money to another player, which I found to be very, very dangerous. <laughs> there are a few downsides to it. Uh, it's a fairly new system, so the dealer is somewhat be computer literate to handle the operation. The biggest downside I found was sometimes the player didn't make the bet and the dealer pressed the button to start the hand and then the player wants to play it. So they have to bring it over the floor manage to avoid the hand. But since the shuffler already pulls out the cards, the whole thing has to be avoided and we have to wait for a new shuffle. This happens a lot and uh, people don't want to miss the hand, so the whole thing is avoided. But, you know, all in all, I, I think it's a great system. I hope to see it more in the future. <laughs> It makes you win or lose so much faster. Hey, thanks a lot for the podcast. I love to listen to you guys. Bye. Okay, interesting. So the game plays the same, except there are no chips, and the dealer doesn't have to figure out who won and who lost. But you go up and you pay with money, and they enter it onto the screen. It goes into your little account on the screen. And then when you cash out, you actually get chips for it. The thing yeah. you take up, yeah, <laughs> instead of like a voucher that would come out of a slot machine. It's funny that you get chips at the end because yeah. <laughs> you're touching chips anyway, right? Yeah. Hey. Well, I don't know that they're doing this necessarily because of COVID. It's probably just a way for them to deal games faster. That's true. Yeah. So I think that's behind it. It's just, you know, it goes a lot quicker, but people still get to touch their cards and look and make decisions. It's just going to go a lot quicker, and the dealer's not going to make mistakes based on the hands. Obviously, the dealer can still make mistakes, but as far as determining winning hands and payouts and stuff like that, the cards, you know, they're scanned as they come out of the shoe. So, you know, the computer just figures it out. Yeah, it's interesting, uh, just as a side here, at Harris Southern California on the Roll to Win crafts, mm -hmm. I noticed some dealers who dealt crafts before not dealing crafts now. And I asked one of the dealers, and they said, that's because we have to shuffle through the roll to win. And those dealers are proficient enough to deal the roll to win. Really? Because, yeah, well, <laughs> because on roll to win, there's only one dealer. Right. So there's nobody to check your mistakes, right? Well, but... Other than, you know, other players complaining, like, if you entered something wrong into the computer. Well, I mean, the only thing they're entering is the roll. Right. But evidently, you know, you've got to get everything correct. You've got to read the cards. Yeah. You've got to read the yeah. dice, yeah, yeah. transfer it to the cards, right. transfer that to the computer, yeah. and keep everything accurate. And some of the less experienced dealers, I guess they don't trust to, they'll do that accurately enough every time that there won't be a lot of stoppage. So they don't let them deal craps anymore. Because they have to rotate. Yeah, because the rotation now includes the regular craps tables and the roll to win. Right. That's funny. So they would let them deal just regular craps, which to me seems right. a lot more complicated. <laughs> well, 
Well, it is more <laughs> but they, complicated, but there's other people to correct you there, right? Oh, that's true. So yeah, before you yeah. mess up, it doesn't slow down as much. <laughs> okay. And there's not a computer to have to reprogram or do whatever they do when there is a mistake. All right. Well, so they want people who are real sure about themselves on those tables. Uh, okay. I guess I I don't know. That seems a little strange to me, but okay. <laughs> It's just what one of the dealers told me. Okay. He said, oh, they can't deal anymore because they're not proficient on that roll to win. I'm like, okay. <laughs> okay. All right. Next call. Hi, this is Greg from Kansas City uh, with a quick trip report from a couple trips to Vegas. First, I want to give a shout out to my 10-year-old son, Garrett, who listens to your show every two weeks when we're in the car together. First part was I was in Vegas at the Ram Park right before the shutdown. And I was playing crafts, had a good round. We were playing $5 table with 10 or $15 odds. And we were just doing really well. I mean, hitting two or three points every time. I was making bets for the dealer, uh, usually a dollar on the fire bet or two way hard ways for them. The problem was when I was done, you know, I had a whole bunch of red, white, and green chips, pushed them all in. And I ended up at $1,000 even. So I turned in several dozens, if not hundreds of chips, and I got back one yellow one. Well, the dealer seemed kind of irritated because I didn't tip them, but I had been tipping them the whole time, and I didn't get any change back but a yellow chip. So I thought that was kind of aggravating. But anyway, we just got back from Vegas this time, and it was definitely a different mood. Probably got my temperature taken five or six different ways on the wrist, on the forehead, on thermal scans, so that was interesting. And then also, different rules everywhere you went. Playing pie gal at the Venetian, and you couldn't touch the cards at all, to the California where it's double-deck pitch blackjack like normal, and you're touching the cards on every hand. Last thing, I had made a Padres to win the World Series bet for you guys before the shutdown and never sent it to you because I thought it was going to be refunded. Well, I went to get it refunded this time to make a new bet, and they said it was still action, so that will be coming your way. Anyway, appreciate the show. Thanks, guys. Bye. Well, thanks, Greg. We appreciate it. You know, <laughs> Mike and I have been joking. This is the year the Padres are going to win the World Series because when they do, there's going to be this huge asterisk next to it in all the sports history books. Right. This would be the only time that they have a real legitimate shot to win. (laughs) Oh, well, I'm going to say this right now to Garrett. Hey, Garrett. Greg's son. Garrett, when you're 21, you know, in 12 years, whatever it is, I want to see you in Vegas so I can make a couple of pass line bets with full odds for you. (laughs) That's nice. That's a promise. All right. (laughs) And I hope I'm there to do it. And I hope Greg (laughs) uh, appreciates that and is not angered by you. uh, Well, hey, he's letting his son listen to a gambling podcast, so I guess it's okay. he's okay. Anyway. We're not going to give him the proper education and crap, right? That's right. That's right. Smart gambling. So good, Garrett. Thank you for listening. We're glad you like the show. Yeah, it is funny how there are so many different rules for for different casinos, even within the same vicinity as Las Vegas. Because remember what happened in Nevada was, it wasn't like the gaming commission said, all right, here's what you have to do as a casino. No, instead, the casinos came up with their own plans and submitted those to gaming, and gaming basically gave the approvals. So that's why you get you know rules that are quite a bit different when you go from one casino to the next. Now, as far as uh, your story about tipping, we've talked about this before. There are a lot of us who tip while we're playing, but we don't tip when we leave the table. You do see a lot of people when they leave the table, they'll color up and then whatever extra chips they have, maybe all the reds and whites they'll toss in as a tip. But we don't do that. Mike, you don't do that. I think Eric Rosenthal said he doesn't. And if you're tipping the whole time, you know, to be irritated at the end that you're not tipping even more, that's kind of crummy. Yeah, that's really crummy. Yeah. I don't think I've ever tipped at the end because I tip so much while I'm playing. Yeah. That, you know, what would I throw at the end that would make any difference? Yeah. <laughs> I mean, you know, uh, seriously, yeah, I mean, I'm going to throw them like 10 bucks. Yeah, the kind of I bets mean, you're making for them, it's true. Yeah, they've won $1,000 already. I'm not going to tip them 10 more at the end. Yeah. It's just like you pick one or the other. And I think a lot of people, and I'm not saying this is bad, but I think a lot of people like to tip at the end because if they cash out for say $895, they'll give the dealer, you know, 25 bucks or something, Mm -hmm, Yeah, you know, and that's fine. The dealers appreciate that. Believe me. 
But, you know, I mean, I just think, well, I'm going to tip the whole way, so I don't have to worry about it at the end. Yeah. And, you know, there are some people who only tip at the end, and I wouldn't recommend that only because you want to let the dealers know that you're a tipper, <laughs> you know, kind of up right. front. We have to admit, being friendly, it has so many advantages. First of all, you get treated better, mm-hmm. and dealers are on your side. <laughs> right. It creates a better atmosphere. <laughs> right. But it also, you know, goes around, comes around, I believe. So, you know, when you're tipping your dealers, especially now, because we actually heard from a dealer friend of ours who said that tips were really down mm. because the volume is down. There's yeah. less people out there gambling and everyone's a little more worried about money and stuff. And it was affecting his bottom line. You know, that's his paycheck. Yeah. So, you know, this is the time maybe to, if you can, throw in an extra buck or two. Oh, yeah, I know. I got my hair cut here recently for the first time in a long time. And I tipped substantially because <laughs> I know, you know, they haven't been getting anything, no income at all. Right. And this is the time to take care of each other. Yeah. All right. Next up is Tristan. What's going on, guys? It's Friday night. I'm leaving Harris. Came here looking for you guys, but also came for my third trip to Harris this week. The first two went freaking amazing. And I walked out up 100 bucks one night and up 306 the next night. Can't win three times in a week, apparently. I pressed it too hard. It's pretty busy, and getting a seat on the bubble craps was kind of hard. And there was, well, I was being a vulture too, but there were a lot of vultures hanging around, like just waiting for somebody to get up. Not a really interesting story, but I was looking for you guys. You weren't here. And I lost at bubble craft. <laughs> All right, bye. <laughs> yeah, like we said, we didn't go this last week because uh, Mike was not feeling well. And sorry, Tristan, he actually tweeted out, hey, are you guys going to be at Harris tonight? And I didn't see the tweet till the next day, so sorry about that. But yeah, hopefully we're going to get back into the casino soon. Yeah, I'm hoping. I would I would love to be able to go this Friday night. I, I don't know that that's going to happen for sure, but yeah. I would love it if I could. Yeah. All right, last call. Hey, Mark and Dr. Mike, this is Baker. I'm just calling for a trip report. I just visited Turning Stone at Verona, New York, upstate New York. They actually require 120 mile distance for patrons. So if you're out of town or out of state, they will not allow you to come in. Also, I uh, stayed at the lodge for the first time there. There was actually four options to stay. The, the inn, the hotel, the tower, and the lodge. The lodge is the higher end which is pretty expensive. But, uh, yeah, I had room service. It was awesome. The filet mignon was great. I did not realize that they actually had different restaurants for different venues, you know. Yeah, that was great. Also, Mark, I noticed you like Long Island iced teas. Me too. I I actually had plastic cups in the casino, which was lower alcohol. But the glass pints in the restaurant and room service was a lot more alcoholic. Yeah, for sure. Also, masks are required sometimes. <laughs> if you're in the smoking room, it's voluntary there. It's just weird. I did play poker, and apparently they only open for seven seats. And also, some exits are actually closed after 11 p.m. And since we were staying at the lodge, it was tough to get back to the lodge because we had to go in the front of the casino and actually call for a shuttle bus. So that was kind of... It wasn't that great. Also, the table games, they looked like they were full. And the slot payouts didn't really pay me much, but they paid my wife pretty well. You know how that goes, though. But I didn't have a chance to play craps because of my bankroll. But we were actually staying on the Shenandoah Golf Resort at the lodge, and that was awesome. They had a jacuzzi in the room, and not in the room, but on the balcony of the room, and it was great beautiful view. It's a beautiful day and you can see the moon and all that stuff. So if you want a romantic vacation, yeah, just go to the Lodge at Turning Stone. That's awesome. I wish I was getting paid for this. But mm-hmm. yeah, thank you. Keep going at your podcast and I, I'm hoping you get on YouTube someday. Just wondering why. Do you guys not want to be famous at all or what? See you. Bye. Okay. You don't want to see us on YouTube. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you don't want to see our faces. And to be honest, it would just be us sitting in front of the microphones talking. It's not like we would be doing anything different. And it would make it a lot harder for me to edit. 
you know, if it was video. It's I can edit the audio fine. You, I can edit out long pauses and uhs and you knows, and you can't even tell. But if it's video, you'd be able to tell. And yeah, we don't want to be famous. That's the other reason. Yeah, I just don't want to have to wear clothes while we do this. Exactly. Yeah, he's talking about how some of the exits were closed. I'm sure it was just, you know, not just exits, but basically, you know, doors that serve as exits and entrances. And just at a certain point, they didn't have enough staff to man those doors that maybe not a lot of people were coming through. And since a lot of places are taking your temperature or checking for masks, that kind of thing, it's probably not just worth it to them. But it's too bad then you had to go out the front and actually get a shuttle. (laughs) <laughs> yeah, that's kind of funny. Go out the front door. Can you take me to my car? It's in <laughs> the back. That's right. Well, hey, let's listen to a gambling scene. This scene is from the TV show The Marvelous Mrs. Maisel. It's a comedy drama on Amazon Prime Video that takes place in the late 1950s, early 1960s. And it follows a housewife named Miriam Midge Maisel, who pursues a career in stand-up comedy. Midge is played by Rachel Brosnahan, and her manager, Susie, is played by Alex Borstein. They're both excellent. They've both won Emmys for their roles in The Marvelous Mrs. Maisel. So this clip comes from episode three of the third season, an episode entitled Panty Pose, where Midge and Susie travel to Las Vegas, where Midge is going to perform her act. So the scene takes place just after they've arrived, and they head down to the casino to play. They play some slots, and they watch some people playing craps and blackjack. And the first part of the scene is funny because while they're playing slots, they're surprised they're not winning anything. You know how when you play a a new slot machine for the first time, and the symbols come up, and you see a certain combination, and you think... Well, that combination looks like it should have paid something, right? You know, you're thinking, oh, well, they're lined up. They're seven bar bar. Shouldn't that pay? So anyway, it's kind of funny. Let's have a listen. You'll probably recognize Alex Borstein's voice in particular because she is the voice of Lois on Family Guy. So let's listen. Hey, let's go downstairs. That casino's calling out to me. That should have been something. That should have been something. Cherry, orange, cherry, that should have been something. Lemon, lemon, orange, that should have been something. Ah, cherry, jackpot, kumquat, that should have been something. That's a blueberry. That's a retarded blueberry. Bell, blueberry, bell, that should have been something. Ah, I won! You won! I'm rich! Look at all those pennies pouring. You'd think if they were nickels. It'd be so amazing. And the drinks are free. Still paying out. I love Vegas! What's a don't pass for? What's a field? What are odds? Are odds good? What's perhaps 11? What's no 11? What's a come line? What's a don't come line? Blowing them, sweetie. Really? Why? Why don't you blow them? For luck. No more bets. Six. <laughs> good job, honey. He gave me money. Why? Why should you get money? Because you got a six? What's a hard way? Is there a soft way? What's that bet? What's that bet? Well, why does 12 pay double? Why does 2 pay double? What's C-E? Yeah. Split. Why'd you split that? What's a split? Should I blow on your cards? I'm gonna double. You're doubling? Do you blow on cards? Why are you doubling? Stand. You're standing on that. It's blowing just for craps. Why'd you stand on that? Either is 20. Yes! No. What happened? That should have been something. That should have been something. That should have been something. Hey, Susie. That should have been something. That should have been something. Susie. That should have been something. That should have been something. What time is it? I don't know. 7.30? 8? Holy shit, it's after midnight. We've been here six straight hours? I guess so. I just realized I've really got to go to the bathroom. Yeah, me too. Hey, what have you guys been up to? Uh, Midge blew a guy's hard six. What? No, I blew on a guy and he got a hard six and he gave me money. That doesn't sound good either. Bathroom. Later, Henry. <laughs> so, I love how Susie, when she's at the table, she's just asking all these questions about the crabs. Right? What's a hard way? What's C and E? She's going so fast, nobody's answering her. She's not really waiting for an answer. Just, what's this? <laughs> what's that? What are odds? Are odds good? <laughs> <laughs> you know what I was thinking when they're, when she's saying stuff like that? Should have been something. It should have been something. What time is it? Oh, my God. It's midnight. I'm thinking, that's like somebody put like a microphone inside my brain. Because that's what I'm thinking the whole time. I'm thinking three and a six. That could have been a three and a three. 
<laughs> that should have paid something. What time is it? What? <laughs> He's blowing only for craps. Too. I love that. <laughs> so, yeah, it's a funny show. Thanks to Zamir for pointing us to that clip. All right, well, that's going to do it for this episode. Hey, we want to thank some people for some PayPal donations. First of all, recurring donations from Kurt, Robin at Anytime Gambling, Justin, and Nathan. Thanks very much for those recurring donations. And also from our buddy Ed O'Connor, he said, Thanks for keeping me company while doing yard work. Hope all is well with you guys. Yeah, you too, Ed. Hope everything's going well for you there. Yeah, you know what's funny? Just a couple of weeks ago, my dad asked about those guys from Atlantic City. Ah, yeah. He was talking about Ed and Jim. Yeah. And he just asked, have you heard from them? Are they okay? <laughs> so, Ed, I'm glad you left this uh, message because uh, I'm going to tell my dad, you're doing good. You're doing lots of yard work. Good. And I know Jim still tweets a lot, too. So he's doing well as well. Great. Hey, be sure to check out our TV listing showing all the gambling-related shows coming up within the next two weeks at youcanbetonthat.com slash tv-listings and our list of gambling-related movies at youcanbetonthat.com slash movies. We'd love to hear from you. Call our voicemail hotline at 951-292-4377. That's 951-2-WAGERS. 951-2-WAGERS. Or you can email us at youcanbetonthat at gmail.com. You can also follow us on Twitter at You Can Bet On That and on Facebook at facebook.com slash You Can Bet On That. Finally, please go to your favorite podcast app and write a review on us. We love getting your feedback. Everything okay over there? I heard a dog bark. Yep, there's a dog bark. There's always a dog barking in our house. Yeah. <laughs> All right, Mark. Well, we got another episode in the bag yep. here. Hopefully, we'll be able to get back to the casino soon. We've sure missed a lot of free play. Yeah, no kidding. I mean, just yep. even this week, there's been a ton. I've, it's like the highest free play amount I've ever gotten. I just haven't been able to get up there. Yeah, and I didn't feel good enough to go, yeah. so I've missed out on it all. <laughs> yeah. So I guess it goes to show that we're really real people. <laughs> <laughs> Is that what it when goes to show? Comes, yeah, well, when push comes to shove, we have to shove the casino aside oh. for a little bit to deal with our lives. Yeah, so that's true. I, I, in a way, that makes me feel good. <laughs> <laughs> and we are still, you know, looking towards October. We still would love to go to Vegas for a Circa, but, you know, again, it's just, it's too far out, really. <laughs> you yeah, never know. right. At this point, I don't think anyone can make any trip plans anywhere, really. Yeah. I mean, unless it's something you absolutely have to go to, yeah. you have to really think twice about this. Yep. And thanks to, once again, I want to thank all the people who are out there, like my doctor and his staff and everyone who's out there working, regardless of everything going on. Yeah, so. definitely. All right. Well, stay safe, everybody. Thanks for listening. Good night. Dr. Mike.